right now. Aw, oh, shoot, honey. I thought you told me she went Friday. Well, they might have changed the schedule since last year, honey. But don't worry, I'm not doing comedy this year. You know, it's been a long day of work, of school. I think I'm gonna do something different, something soothing, relaxing. So just sit back and close your eyes and enjoy the soothing sounds of my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your eyes closed. <laughs> okay, so, usually, all right, first of all, how's everybody doing today? So, usually I have something to say about how dark the room is, but it's actually gotten a lot brighter since last year, which is uh, more than I can say about my own future. <laughs> AP test. Um, and I'm a senior this year, so hopefully this is my last year doing monologue show. <laughs> say hopefully, because if you see me on stage next year, you might be delighted! And also slightly concerned. <laughs> As I transition into adulthood, I have a lot of regrets about the decisions I've made in my youth. And uh, one thing that I do sorely regret is not eating more Hot Pockets. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because pizza bites are amazing, but Hot Pockets, they're like shy, modest pizza bites. <laughs> Regular pizza bites are like, hi, everybody over here. Hey, don't you want a little bit of this? <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm an adult, so I gotta start eating vegetables, <laughs> like cauliflower. <laughs> cauliflower. <laughs> I'm Chinese. We eat everything. I don't get cauliflower. <laughs> See, cauliflower is like an albino broccoli. It's like, it's like a broccoli with a rare skin condition. It's like a broccoli that died. It's like a Michael Jackson of broccoli. <laughs> ah, jokes are sometimes really hard to write. Because you know, usually when you find something funny, it's because someone else told you, and you're like, ha ha ha, that's funny, I'll use that. <laughs> But you know, it's, it's hard, especially in front of the same audience that you performed for last year because you can't use the same jokes. You can't tell a joke twice to the same audience. Because telling jokes is like dating in high school. You do it once. You don't ever do it again. And still a week later, your friends are coming up to you like, hey, Angela, it could have been better. But I have people who say, Angela, you can't care what other people think about you. You have to be a turkey. Okay, Andrew. Yeah, bold, confident, feathered. But here's the problem. Turkeys are very receptive to outside opinions because they're shaped like fat satellite dishes. <laughs> but see, my confidence is not a turkey. It's like feta cheese. <laughs> it crumbles so easily. <laughs> I'll, give you a, I'll give you an example. I play the violin, and I have to go through auditions. And every year, I walk into that room, and the judge says, you're Angela Fu, correct? I'm Angela Fu. How do you spell that? <laughs> I'm Angela Fu. <laughs> Play the first excerpt. Now? <laughs> yes. Now, now? Whenever you're ready. Am I ready now? I don't know. You think I know that? Just play the first excerpt.
<laughs> Play the next excerpt. The next excerpt? The second excerpt? The one with the two at the top of the page? Yes, the second excerpt. <laughs> second as in two? No, second as in 17. But I only prepared two excerpts. <laughs> then play the second one. Which one is the second one? <laughs> the one you haven't played yet. <laughs> Because I want to say things that will get people to like me because I like being liked. It's a good feeling. So usually I go up to people and I say, hey, I just met you and this is crazy. But I'm using an outdated pop culture reference to start a conversation because I don't know how to talk to people. I'd give you my number, but uh, I don't really trust you. Here, have a paper clip. <laughs> people scare me. I don't want to be a people. <laughs> I want to be a non-people, non-person, a non-human being. I don't want to be bipedal anymore. I want to be a pomegranate. <laughs> Just like brown and sweet and not people. That's the best part about pomegranates. They're not people. So you cut them and they don't cry. You eat them and you don't get arrested. <laughs> See, like, the problem with pomegranates is like if I were a pomegranate and you were a pomegranate and I ate you, I might get tried by the refrigerary, but I'm... <laughs> 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 Cancer. <laughs> I haven't even started yet. But see, you laughed because you didn't know what else to do. Is she really going to make a joke about cancer? <laughs> kind of. Alright, listen, listen up. So, spam causes cancer, and Twinkies cause cancer, and ramen causes cancer. There's always a health scare or another trying to get you to eat less of this and that, and they come up with these shocking facts. Breaking news, 100% of people who eat Twinkies die. <laughs> Breaking news, 100% of people die. <laughs> but Twinkies aren't even the worst of it. Let me warn you about the most despicable food of all. Watermelon. No. <laughs> you guys don't believe me, but you haven't heard the truth. What is the shape of a watermelon slice? It's a triangle. That's right, Illuminati confirmed! That's right. That's right! Why is the rind of a watermelon green? Radiation poisoning! <laughs> and, breaking news, 100% of cancer patients who eat watermelon have cancer, and they eat watermelon. Watermelon causes cancer! <laughs> And you know, we, we blame food for a lot of our problems. But when it comes to food, we are the problem. I went out with a friend who we went to get pizza. She uh, ordered a slice of vegetarian pepperoni. <laughs> I said, isn't that just cheese pizza? <laughs> and she said, no, 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 Angela, Angela, no, let me explain this to you. Ah, uh, vegetarian pepperoni pizza is cheese pizza without the pepperoni meat on it. So it's just cheese pizza. No, 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 Angela, Angela, you don't understand. I know, it's hard, let me break it down for you. Cheese pizza is pizza with just the cheese. Vegetarian pepperoni pizza is pepperoni pizza without the pepperoni. Do you understand now? And at that point I understood. I needed new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Edamame. 
I thought that was the name of a rapper. <laughs> you know, Buster Rhymes, Florida, Edamame. <laughs> edamame is soybeans. <laughs> it's soybeans. If you're tired of saying soybeans, just t give your mouth a break and say soy. If you don't like my name, Angela, you can't come up to me and say, Angela, can I give my mouth a break and call you Angie? No. <laughs> no, because Angie is a great name for a chihuahua. <laughs> come on, Angie, come here. Oh, no. oh, you're so cute. I can put you in my purse and you can pee all over my credit card. Because <laughs> some words like soybean and soy are interchangeable. It doesn't change the meaning. But you have words like Angela you can't shorten. It's totally different. If I asked you for a jar of peanut butter and you gave me a can of peas, I would be really disappointed. <laughs> Similarly, when I hear the name Angela, I think confident. I think smart, I think funny. None of which apply to me, but it's a, it's a good name, it's a good name. When I hear Angie, I think of, come here Angie, come here, hey girl. I'm a second semester senior, which means on May 29th, I'll have to drive and drive all the way to a far reaching auditorium and sit in the audience with a square on my head and a blue potato sack over my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> and listen to a middle-aged white guy struggle with the ethnic complexities of over a 900 names. <laughs> 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 so I also don't like parties, because to quote the wise words of Ariana Grande, yes. I've got 99 problems, and they're all varying degrees of social anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes it hard to apply for colleges, because I can't English good when interview people's talky talky questions at me. I don't understand. <laughs> they say, Angela, tell me a little bit about yourself. I like cats. <laughs> and I watch cat videos. <laughs> in, in, in my free time, um, I, I, I sit in chairs and occasionally I stand up and walk around. <laughs> oh, all right, Angela. Um, tell me, what's your greatest strength as a student? I'm good at lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Angela, and this has been a great interview. It was nice to meet you. D d don't lie to me. That's my job. <laughs> and college interviews aren't even the worst part about college. The first worst thing, the worstest thing about applying for college is college passwords for all of your accounts. Because I use the same password for all of my academics. School sucks, all lowercase, no spaces. <laughs> but then when I open my laptop and try to use that password, yeah, we were a little bit under budget, so. <laughs> I had to go to the chair model. Right. I try to put that password in, school sucks. We're sorry, you need a capital letter. All right, capital S, school sucks. We're sorry, you need a number. All right, capital S, school sucks, one, two, three. We're sorry, you need a symbol. <laughs> capital C, college applications are stupid, underscore 666. Six, six. <laughs> Processing, checking password strength. Sorry, it's insecure. At this point, I just start pressing random keys. F7, hashtag, asterisk, dollar sign, exclamation point, TG, capital R2, S7, six, six, six. <laughs> Checking password strength. Acceptable. Barely. <laughs> so I put in the rest of my information and I click submit, processing, verifying information. We're sorry, but this password is already in use. <laughs> Forget it! Forget it! I'm not going to college anymore. I'm going to be a magician. That's right. You know what's great about being a magician?
competition, you put up your hands and the crowd goes wild! Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you guys weren't really into that. Let's try it again! Yeah. But Angela, do you know any magic tricks? Well, yes I do, but I'll need a volunteer from the audience. You! You look really gullible! I mean, beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like an ordinary deck of cards. It is an ordinary deck of cards. Now, I want you to pick a card. Not that one. <laughs> one more to the left. My, my left. Oh yeah, that was my left. Keep going. <laughs> okay, that's good, that's good. Alright, don't show me a card. I am using my powers of mysticism to predict that your card is not in this deck. <laughs> Put your card back and shuffle. Don't let me see it. But face the audience. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Yeah, right? Right here. I'm not looking. Just shuffle that down. <laughs> I am not looking. I'm not. I don't see anything. Is that a deck of cards? I don't see it. <laughs> Alright, that's good. Now, uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Is this your card? Could be. I mean, like, you, you can't check, that's cheating. But, like, <laughs> from the back, does it kind of look like yours? No. Your card? Like, from the back. No, it's not. Okay, alright. Is this your card? Is this your card? Is your card somewhere in this deck? Yeah, it is! <laughs> without a little bit of alchemy, right? Now hold this. Oh, I love alchemy too. I, the great Fudini, have traveled far and wide to the furthest most reaches of ancient Egypt and I have found hieroglyphs from their sacrificial religions you've never seen before. I'm going to draw one for you today. Watch closely, folks. You start with the three points of magical unity, the mind, the soul, and the body. <laughs> now, you find the points in the center for balance, and you draw a line in the center for constitution. Lastly, you connect all your points. <laughs> But because this is copyrighted, I will now make it disappear. <laughs> now, now, now. This don't work. I'm going to transform this piece of paper into two pieces of paper. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. But from two, it becomes four! <laughs> That's the wrong script, sorry. <laughs> You're gonna have to do this with me, ready? Alright. One, with me. One, with the hand gestures. One, two, three. Abracadabra! I have turned this paper into confetti! <laughs> I do a lot of things that people don't expect. <laughs> Which is why Mr. Rossi and I always get into arguments. <laughs> He's like, Angela, you can't swear. I said, Mr. Rossi, you don't understand. Swear words are like the bread and butter of stand-up comedians. I need to swear. And he said, Angela, you gotta remember, some of your audience members have children. And I said, Mr. Rossi, why are you blaming me for other people's mistakes? <laughs> and so, Mr. Rossi came up with this new policy. Every single
single member per each performance is only allowed one swear word. One swear word? That's okay if it's like a dramatic piece or like a dialogue. You just want emphasis, drama in this one pinnacle moment. But I'm a stand-up comedian. One swear word for a stand-up comedian is like one ornament on a Christmas tree. <laughs> it looks really shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's complicated. I, uh, I just used my swear word, didn't I? <laughs> oh, fun houses. <laughs> There's another thing that all monologue show people have to do. That's go to dress rehearsals. Every single one. So I sat through every dress rehearsal. And I saw everybody else's pieces and I said, holy sugar, they're good. <laughs> they're good. And I applauded for them, but I felt really bad inside. I was jealous. I felt petty. And feeling so insecure and like all bitter about how good everybody else's pieces were made me realize I'm kind of an ass, asparagus. <laughs> I mean, like, really, an asparagus, just soggy green and ruining everything I touch. <laughs> so I went to my friend, I said, please, tell me what to do. What if I forget my lines? Just repeat the last thing you said. But what if I forget my lines? Just repeat the last thing that you said. And I knew I wasn't getting anywhere with her. <laughs> So I went home and I cried. <laughs> and while I was just shoveling tear-stained chocolates into my face, I realized I do have something that will save my performance. Hang on, folks. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. <laughs> 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 okay, this is this is like not a bribe. Okay, it's not, it's not a bribe. But I was just wondering um, if you like candy, and if I give this to you, I, I give you this candy, and you laugh a little bit louder. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bribe. How loud do you want me to laugh? More. <laughs> but, uh, it is a bribe. It is a bribe. But just between you and me, and the rest of the audience, who wants some chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> you're all thinking to yourselves, Angela, you're bribing your audience to like you? Where's your integrity? I'm a senior. I don't have any integrity. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know what the meaning of life is? <laughs> just, just a question, just a casual question, you know. What's your favorite color? What's the meaning of life? <laughs> I googled it. The internet says the meaning of life is 42. What is the meaning of life? 42! You're wrong. <laughs> the internet lied to you all. You know how I know? What letter does the internet start with? I, that's right, Illuminati confirmed! <laughs> I know the meaning of life is in 42. Because that's the average age of adults who go through midlife crises. <laughs> You know, and it's not because their lives are too meaningful. You ever hear someone say this? I just can't go on. What's, what's wrong? Nothing. No, really, what's wrong? Nothing, literally nothing. I'm so happy right now. It's not all my hopes and dreams have been fulfilled. And I'm just so emotionally just, I'm too happy. <laughs> talks like that, you're giggling because that's ridiculous. And if you do know someone who's just so upset about being so happy, I give you my express permission 
to befriend them, and little by little, steal from them. <laughs> Take everything that they own, the, the tableware, the bunny slippers, the shower curtains, the toilet paper, the coat hangers, everything. Take everything. Nobody deserves to be that happy. Because when they're unhappy by comparison, you're happier. <laughs> and that's the meaning of life. You know, it's not, it's not about what other people need, you know? Screw their feelings as long as you're happy. And just do whatever you want, chase your ridiculous dreams. And you know what? Be a magician. Be a calculator password. Be a college interviewer. Be a pomegranate. Whatever. But if there's one thing I want you all to remember, from my presentation. Watermelon. <laughs> 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 <laughs>